1851, a man called Samuel Cartwright came up with a fairly sophisticated scientific explanation for why so many slaves were running away from plantations in the American South. These fugitive slaves, Cartwright explained, were suffering from a medical disorder. It was called drapedomania. It was a syndrome characterized by an uncontrollable or insane impulsion to wander. So that was the problem. It wasn't that they disliked being enslaved or yearned for freedom and basic humanity. No, no, no. The problem, according to Samuel Cartwright, was that black people as a group were inherently defective. They were drapedomaniacs. They were always running away. 170 years later, it is embarrassing to repeat something this stupid out loud. It's so obviously insane. But here's what you should know. The point is, scientific racism never actually went away. It's still with us. No one talks about drapedomania anymore. Instead, our medical professionals and law professors and military leaders and politicians and cable news hosts have identified a new disorder they claim explains everything bad. It's called whiteness. He's faced with extremism in the ranks. He's faced with an enemy that is based on white rage. Un believable Welcome back, everyone. I'm Drone Tech, and apparently one of the, quote, enemies that our military leaders are now focused on instead of our foreign adversaries like China. Strap yourselves in, and if you have heart medication, better take it now. While you're doing that, give me just 30 seconds to tell you about this free coin offer for my viewers. There's a 5,000-year-old asset that's seen off every world crisis there ever was and thrived. Gold and precious metals. The oldest hedge against inflation and disaster. Your stability insurance. Take out an IRA with Noble Gold this month. And along with first class service, they're gifting a 1 10th ounce gold bullion American Eagle coin. You can find out more by visiting the link in the description or pinned comment, or simply go to their website at www.noblegoldinvestments.com. Or you could even call them at 877-646-5347. Make sure to tell them Drone Tech Politics sent you. He's faced with extremism in the ranks. He's faced with an enemy that is based on white rage or uh, that the FBI has said is our biggest terrorist threat right now. So what he's doing is studying them. You know, military leaders often use the, the phrase of Sun Tzu of know yourself, know the enemy, know the terrain. He's trying to get to know the enemy. Extremism in the ranks? Is he talking about Islamic extremism? Which has manifested in several shootings at military bases. Since 2009, there have been five mass shootings on U.S. military bases. Of those shootings, two were Muslim, one Hispanic, one Puerto Rican, and one black man. Or are we talking about the ghostly, nebulous threat of white supremacy? Where are they exactly? And which attacks have they carried out that have catapulted them to the number one national security threat in America? As far as I can tell very little if anything. This retired general repeatedly throws out this completely made up mental condition known as white rage. What's the definition of white rage? I couldn't find anything. What caused this white rage? How do you define it? <laughs> of course! They don't even have a definition of it, yet they're applying that label to their political opposition. In other words, it's a racist stereotype being broadly assigned to people based on their skin color and their political party. Faced with it, how do you counter it? Uh, he, he implied, you know, rightfully so, the same thing I did, just did right now, that Capitol Police and potentially military personnel were in harm's way in combat at our Capitol building. I'm, I'm fully supportive of General Milley uh, and what he said yesterday because that's what smart military leaders do. They find out what is causing the enemy to do the things that they're doing. Other conservatives, including in right-wing media, they're attacking the military somehow soft for discussing issues of race. First off, I want to point out the guy who's interviewing this idiot, who is a former Obama Biden administration official. He went from doing that job to being a Democrat party propagandist on CNN. Now he's doing that job while his boss is president. Do you think CNN ever discloses any of this? Of course not. But the real nefariousness of this point will become more clear in a moment. Second, I find it very odd that this retired general and these other military leaders are saying that they're learning about this alleged domestic enemy from a bunch of 
of far left racist extremists. How does that make any sense at all? It's like learning about hippies and black people from a book written by Archie Bunker. Wouldn't they be reading books put out by people like Richard Spencer to learn about that threat? Why is the military looking towards Marxists and communists to learn about an enemy that just happens to be their political opposition? We just went through an entire year of almost non-stop left-wing violence by people who carried hammer and sickle flags. Strange that they are not considered any sort of a threat. Lastly, what did January 6th have anything to do with skin color? It wasn't only white people there. And as far as I know, there's no evidence at all that the larger protests had anything to do with race. What's your reaction to that, uh, you know, criticism that somehow Millie's being soft by having this discussion? It's ludicrous. It's ridiculous. Uh, the, the, the slams and the pejorative comments about being woke are just ridiculous. It's not wokeism. It's, it's mm -hmm. an attempt to analyze and digest yeah. and then deal yeah. with problems that are facing our countries as we protect and defend the Constitution. Study their surrounding. Study their enemies. So I, I think those on the right, mm -hmm. or anyone, right or left, who's saying anything about the military being mm -hmm. woke, First of all, they're usually not part of the military. They've never served. Yeah. No, actually, I think every American has a right to criticize anybody in positions of power, whether they've served in the military or not. You see there? He just referred to the enemy again. The enemy being anybody who's white and opposes Democrats. In other words, Republicans, conservatives, libertarians. Hell, if you're white and you oppose Democrats, you are now the enemy. Don't believe me? Well, according to Rep. Michael Waltz, West Point has been giving seminars to its cadets called, quote, Understanding White and white rage. According to him, the woman who teaches this class described the Republican Party as, quote, a platform of white supremacy, which anybody who watches the media knows is a common accusation lodged by Democrat Party operatives pretending to be journalists and reporters. Why do these folks think that they're above criticism? Much like the media, criticism is now framed as an attack by extremists. We're moving into dark times, folks. That much is clear. I can't take any more of this gaslighting, so I'm going to end the video here. Make sure to share, like, and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow.